Hi there. In this video I'll be answering a question about electrical potential and electric field strength. Calculating electrical potential at a point between two charges and discussing the differences between potential and electric field strength. Here's a question from the CFE Advanced Higher Specimen paper. Two point charges Q1 and Q2 are separated by a distance of 0.60 metres as shown in figure 10a. The charge on Q1 is negative 8.0 nanocoulombs. The electric field strength at point X is zero. Part one then asks us to state what's meant by electric field strength. So many definitions can be worked out if we just remember the associated equation which goes with that quantity. The magnitude of electric field strength E can be calculated using this equation, where F is the force exerted on a charge placed in the electric field and Q is its charge. The unit of electric field strength is therefore newtons per coulomb, and here's a definition. Electric field strength is the force per unit positive charge. In other words, the force exerted on a point charge of magnitude plus one coulombs at that point. The reason why it's the force per unit positive and not negative charge is a historical one that I'll be covering in an upcoming collaboration video on conventional current and electron flow. Look out for it when it's released. Here's part two of the question. We're now asked to show that the charge on Q2 is negative 2.0 nanocoulombs. So remember that we're told that electric field strength at X is zero. So it must be that the electric field strength due to charge one, we'll call that E1, is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the electric field strength due to charge two. Since electric field strength is a vector quantity, E1 and E2 add to zero at point X. Remember that to find the direction of the electric field due to a charge, we imagine placing a positive test charge at that point. A positive test charge placed at X would of course experience a force to the left towards charge one, which is why E1 is to the left. It would also experience a force to the right towards charge two, which is why E2 is to the right. Here's the equation which allows us to calculate electric field strength E1 due to charge one. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, a constant that can be found in the data sheet at the front of the exam. R1 is the distance from charge Q1 to point X. E2 is calculated using the same equation, with different values for charge and distance. As I said earlier, E1 is equal to E2, so we can combine the two equations. Next, we can cancel the terms which appear on both sides in order to simplify our new equation. Substituting our values into this equation gives us this. Finally, we can make Q2 the subject of the equation by multiplying both sides by 0 0.20 squared, which gives us negative 8.0 times 10 to the negative 9 times 0 0.20 squared divided by 0 0.40 squared, which equals the desired answer of negative 2.0 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. Next up, it's part three of the question. Here we're asked to calculate the electrical potential at point X. It's important to remember that unlike electric field strength, electrical potential is a scalar quantity. Electrical potential at a point is the work done in bringing unit positive charge from infinity to that point. To find our answer, we have to find the electrical potential at X due to charge Q1, then do the same for charge Q2, then add them. No need for vector addition here since potential is a scalar. Electrical potential at X due to charge one is given by this equation, but here we'll actually have to look up the value for epsilon naught from the data sheet. The values of Q1 and R1 are as before, so we can substitute them into the equation like so. Note that in this equation, distance R is not squared, so be careful when going from one equation to the next. The electrical potential at X due to charge one alone is negative 180 volts. We then use the same equation to find electrical potential due to charge two, substituting different values for charge Q and distance R like so. This gives us a value of negative 90 volts. We've still not found our final answer, although we are running out of room a little, so we'll give ourselves a little more space by moving our values of V1 and V2 up a bit. Finally, to find the electrical potential at X, we simply add these two values, giving us an answer of negative 270 volts. The next part of the question asks us to calculate the electrical potential at a point above point X. Here I'm highlighting the positions of Q1, X and Q2 to make it easier to identify them in the next diagram. 
In B part 1, we are asked to calculate the electrical potential at point P. We use the same method as in the last question, but first we need to calculate the distance from charges Q1 and Q2 to point P. The distance from Q1 to P is just the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle, this distance. You can see that the distance from Q2 to P is the same, and we can use simple maths to work it out. Distance R is equal to the square root of 0 0.30 squared plus 0 0.40 squared, which is 0 0.50 metres. Again, we find the electrical potential, this time at P, due to charge Q1, then the potential at P due to charge Q2, then add the two values. So the electrical potential at P, due to charge 1, is equal to this, which works out as negative 144 volts. The electrical potential at P due to charge Q2 is equal to this, which is negative 36 volts. Again, because electrical potential is a scalar quantity, we simply add the two values. At least this time we have the room. So the electrical potential at P is negative 144 plus negative 36, which is negative 180 volts. Here's the last part of the question. B part 2 asks us to determine the energy required to move a charge of plus 1.0 nanocoulombs from point X to point P. Remember that point X is at a potential of negative 270 volts, and here we have to move a positive charge of 1 nanocoulombs to point P, which is at a potential of negative 180 volts. The first thing we do is find the potential difference between the two points. That's the final potential at point P, minus the initial potential at point X. So a potential difference is negative 180 minus negative 270, which is 90 volts. Finally, we calculate the energy or work done using this equation. Q is charge and V is potential difference. That gives us an answer of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 9 times 90, which is 9.0 times 10 to the negative 8 joules. Now that's us for another video. Remember to subscribe, if you haven't already done so, to receive notifications when new videos are released. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.